Welcome to Soul Cravings with psychotherapist and writer Karen Seeger. In her show, Karen talks about how to take care, cope, grow, and thrive through difficult times like change, anxiety, loss, death, illness, loneliness, and hopelessness. Karen draws on her knowledge as a therapist, her own life experiences, and offers support locally and globally, and records her shows on her orange houseboat on the River Thames. And now, over to your show host, Karen Seeger. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Soul Cravings with me, Karen Seeger. I'm a psychotherapist and writer based in London, UK. I'm recording this program again today from my houseboat on the Thames. And today's topic is about writing and our well-being. If this is your first time here, then I welcome you very warmly. If you've come back for more, then it's great to have you here again today. Writing and our well-being. You don't need to be the one who does the writing, but you might do some writing, a lot or just a little. You might do a lot of reading or you enjoy listening. Poetry, fiction, any genre can be important for our well-being. It can give us comfort, it can inspire and motivate. Recently on Twitter, I asked the question, I invited people to send me poems, quotes, affirmations, mantras, anything that comforts, motivates or inspires. And I've put together an article which you can find on my website, karenzieger.com, which is really a lovely collection of known and not so well-known pieces of writing which matter to people a lot. And there are also some very personal gems, advice and recommendations that are handed down in the family history. From this collection, I've also invited three contributors to read out their favourite pieces of poetry here for our programme today. More of this shortly. Why does writing matter for our well-being? You can probably answer some of this yourself if you think about how reading or perhaps even writing things yourself can help you in difficult times, help you perhaps ground yourself help you to make sense of things, to communicate how you feel, to get closer, to feel part of something. It's an expression of our identity, and at times of crises, when we are seeking confirmation of our identity, reading what others have to say can be very comforting and can be of great support. If you hear this noise in the background, I'm sitting in the hull of my boat and at the moment we are at high tide. So there is a bit of a wash going on which is making the noise against the metal hull. I hope this won't be too much of a distraction for you today. So reading can transport us into a different world, into a make-believe world but also into a world where perhaps we get confidence that the dreams that we have could become true. Reading can be a very motivating experience. It can also be a way of relaxing, escapism, de-stressing, fueling on hope. And if you are the one who does the writing, then you may share hope with others. Some of our readings we can also memorize and internalize, say out loud or say out quietly or think them through when we are going through a stressful or frightening time, when we need to ground ourselves, when we need to calm down. And those are mantras and affirmations which are very important for our well-being. If you haven't got any, then look into that because you might find it of use. 
Today I would like to share a very famous one with you. Well, at least I think it's famous. It's from Julianne of Norwich. I tell you a bit about her. Julianne of Norwich lived in England, UK, between 1342 and 1416. She is known to us almost only through her book, The Revelations of Divine Love, which is widely acknowledged as one of the great classics of the spiritual life. She thought to have been the first woman to write a book in English which has survived. We don't know Julian's actual name, but her name is taken from St. Julian's Church in Norwich, where she lived as an anchoress for most of her life. We know from the medieval literature work that Julian was known as a spiritual counsellor. Often people will come to her cell in Norwich, she just lived in one little room there, to seek advice. And at the time... The citizens of Norwich suffered from plague and poverty as well as famine, so she must have counselled a lot of people who were experiencing physical and existential pain. A lot of her writing reflects hope and trust in her religion. And something that Julianne said, which I try and remember myself and try and repeat to myself, is... All shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of thing shall be well. If you just listen to this, to this repetitive nature of the words, it is simple yet powerful, and it can be very strengthening. And that's what affirmations and mantras are about. They are easy to repeat easy to remember, positive in their outlook, reassuring, strengthening, something that you can repeat quietly and calmly all over. You can also write it down on a piece of paper, stick it on the wall, stick it on the door, stick it on your mirror, wherever you need to be comforted. Put it in your bag, take it to difficult appointments. I said at the outset, we have three contributions today, something new on this program. I would like to start off with a recording by Taryn, who lives in South Africa. And she shares some wisdom about why our fear does not define who we are. The affirmation Taryn is going to read for us has been selected from the books and TV series Dune, based on the 1965 science fiction novel by Herbert Dune. It was more recently adapted into a TV miniseries, and in 2003 the book was cited as the world's best-selling science fiction novel. I find her reading very moving, and if you pay attention very closely towards the end, you can also hear some birds in the background. I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. Fear is the little death that brings total obliteration. I will face my fear. I will permit it to pass over me and through me. And when it has gone past, I will turn the inner eye to see its path. Where the fear has gone, there will be nothing. Only I will remain. Hello, my name is Taryn. I have mental health issues. I am grieving the loss of both my parents and life is quite stressful and tough right now. Uh, this affirmation reminds me that everything that is rooted in emotion and in fear does not define who I am. And if I remember that, I can get through most days. I'm glad Taryn has selected this piece because we all can identify with anxiety and fear and we all know how overpowering it can be and how it can make us feel as if nothing else matters, that not even we ourselves matter, but we are more than our fear. 
our fear does not define us. It's a piece of hope and very reassuring. Thanks a lot, Aaron, for selecting it, contributing it, and taking the time to record it. It's much appreciated. Our second piece today comes from Gary, who wrote in and also recorded it for us. Gary lives in Cumbria in England, and in his reading, Gary also takes us along to a very special place in Cumbria. It's called Long Meg and her daughter's Stone Circle. It's one of the finest stone circles in the north of England. Long Meg is the tallest of the 69 stones. It's about 12 feet high with three mysterious symbols. It's four corners facing the points of the compass and standing some 60 feet outside the circle. The poet and writer William Wordsworth wrote next to Stonehenge, it is beyond dispute the most notable relic that this or probably any other country contains. Now over to Gary, get yourself comfortable and enjoy listening to what he shares with us today. My name is Gary Liggett. I'm a filmmaker, author and poet who lives in a remote and wild part of Cumbria. I've experienced some chronic and sometimes debilitating episodes of anxiety and panic. Whenever I'm feeling anxious or just need to clear my mind, I go to a stone circle that is not too far away called Long Meg and her daughters. I lie down on one of the monoliths and connect with the ancients who once lived there. For me it's like a guided meditation where I journey with them as they travel around the paths and trackways beyond the fells, through trees, past the sacred well, and along the River Eden. Perhaps my feelings are best summed up by the Native American writer Linda Hogarth, who wrote, Walking, I'm listening to a deeper way. Suddenly, all my ancestors are behind me. Be still, they say. Watch and listen. You are the result of the love of thousands. Now, wasn't this special? I had no idea what Gary was going to say, so I was quite unprepared for the scenic description. I personally find it quite comforting to connect and reconnect with the concept of ancestors. Again, I find it very grounding. I don't think we need to be religious or need to follow certain faiths to be able to tap into this belief. It is open to you whether you like this or not, whether it's something for you or not. It's all up to our individual tastes and where we find ourselves in life and in our life. The third and final reading in today's programme comes from Carve City in Manchester, UK. It's Mary Oliver's Wild Geese. Mary Oliver was an American poet who died in 2019. Her poetry focuses on the quiet of occurrences of nature and when you listen to the poem Wild Geese, you know what this means. Mary Oliver was born in a suburb of Ohio. I read that she would retreat from a difficult home to the nearby woods where she would build huts of sticks and grass and write poems. And I believe that our childhood experiences and how we cope with difficult times then influences who we are and we might then develop coping mechanisms and a creativity which can continue to support us throughout our life and sometimes we lose the connection to it but we can reconnect to it at any time in our life. Sit back and enjoy the poetry of Mary Oliver. You do not have to be good. 
You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. Tell me about your despair, yours, and I will tell you mine. Meanwhile, the world goes on. Meanwhile, the sun and the clear pebbles of the rain are moving across the landscapes, over the prairies and the deep trees, the mountains and the rivers. Meanwhile, the wild geese, high in the clean blue air, are heading home again. Whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination, calls to you like the wild geese, harsh and exciting, over and over announcing your place in the family of things. My name is Kavya Siddhi Mulvey. I counsel as Carver Counselling and I chose Wild Geese by Mary Oliver because I've loved it since I first heard it and I sometimes give it to clients. The message of the poem is really simple. It just says you belong. It says you don't have to do penance, you don't have to do anything spectacular, you don't have to tell me your backstory or do anything complicated. And that's kind of the message, the value that I have in sessions with clients. And it's something I want for myself, just to know that I am okay as a human being, by being a human being, and by definition, worth being part of the world. And once I know that and remember that, then I have the strength to cope with everything because I can relax into who I am, into my strength, into my sadness, whatever I'm feeling, it's okay because I'm a human and it's okay to feel and to think and even to fail. She's acknowledging that everything, rain, sun, mountains, geese, despair, it's a part of life and that's okay. It's no big deal, but we belong. And hearing that is a massive deal. Wasn't this special? Like the two readings before, Kav Yuzidi really did this justice and brought this poem to life. Being a therapist myself, I understand what she says about using creative materials in the work that we do. I think there is a lot of benefit in that. And indeed, if you are a client in therapy, I would always encourage you to bring your own material, something that you might have read, something that you might have written yourself, because it might reflect where you are at, and it's a really good way of getting the conversation going and to explore feelings, beliefs and thoughts. Thank you to my three contributors today for having made the time to select a reading and to record it for us for our programme here today. If ever you would like to record something for me, then do get in touch. Let's discuss it and let's see whether we can make it happen. I hope today's program about writing and our well-being has been of interest to you and I hope it has given you perhaps some ideas in terms of what reading might be of use and support for you, what writing you could do for yourself and for others. Perhaps you can even attend a writing class or check out writing assistance online. There is so much out there. Audiobooks are also great if you'd like to have somebody read to you. You might have had that in your childhood. You might have it today. Personally, I like that a lot. As I said, I hope you have enjoyed today's programme. It was something different. I hope to be able to do something like this again soon. For now, 
check out my website karenzieger.com for the poetry roundup that I mentioned at the outset. I look forward to welcoming you here again next week. Until then, take good care. See you soon. Bye bye. Thanks for listening to Soul Cravings with your host Karen Seeger. You can follow Karen on Twitter at Karen Seeger. Catch up with her articles, videos and work via her website karenseeger.com. That's K A R I N S I E G E R.